Here I've got my unfolded geometry, and I'm just going to do a little quick demonstration of how you can put this stuff together. So if I tab into each one of these guys, you can see that it's represented over here by one of my panels. So these guys are sort of linked. They are, in fact, the same panel family. They're just representing themselves sort of all over the map here. That guy is there. That sort of thing is how, how they line up. So if I start backing this out a little bit, you can see how it goes together. So I'm just going to turn off my temporary hide isolate. And you can see I've got two divided surfaces. One that's actually the divided surface that's the form I want to make. And one divided surface that's sort of the layout for my panels. And I have it repeated with one single family. So if I just delete this for a second, you can see I've got this measuring panel hex base over here. And it's a six point family. And uh, it's a little crazy. I only use five of the points, but if I go one, two, three, four, I've actually just made one panel that's going to create this surface, one quadrilateral. And then I have two placement points, one, two, over here. So now you can see what I've done is I've placed one yellow panel here, and it's made sort of its corollary panel over here. And this panel over here is dimensionally the same as the one on the surface, just it's laid out flat. And I'll get into it. Well, I'll get into this right now. So this panel itself is a little nutty. Um, there's a more thorough explanation of it on another post, which I've linked to on the blog, on, uh, on the reporting parameter, uh, the reporting pattern. So basically what it is is that I'm making one quadrilateral here. It's measuring itself, and then it's reproducing itself over here. And over here is associated with 0.5. So if I drag this one up, you can see that this guy moves with it. So I'm placing 0.1, 2, 3, 4 on my surface. And then I'm placing 0.5 out on my other divided surface. And then 6 is just along for the ride. And so after this guy gets repeated, this guy gets repeated on the other surface. So what happens with that? So if I just select this guy like that, and I have repeat, which just repeats on a surface. I'm repeating one panel, essentially, on two surfaces. So it's mapping 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6 across both of these surfaces. So now I've got both selected. I'm going to hit repeat. I'm going to pause because it's going to take a second for this to really percolate through. So that took about, well, maybe 20, 20 seconds to do. So basically it repeated that panel all the way along this guy and all the way along this guy, which means that now I've got all, was it 144 panels here re-represented out here so that I can now basically go in. I can take this into my project environment now and I can annotate these. I can number them all. Uh, I can put measurements on them, whatever it is that I want to do with them. Uh, you know, cut them out of paper and glue them together arduously. A um, couple things to note on this, if I undo this, just back to here. I'm going to replace this again. You have to do a little bit of hunting around to find the right place here. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Um, if I place you know, my guy here, um, this is essentially grid one for this whole surface. And I found grid one over here. If I put my other panel over here, it's not going to repeat quite so nicely. So just if you try this out and you see the same problem, um, this means you have to hunt around to find your right starting point. So I just repeated it and it and it only finds this one strip here and this one strip here. It has a little bit of sort of some invisible workings here of where cell one is here and where cell one is here. And you just have to match those up. It is kind of interesting this way, though, because you're still getting a strip. You're still getting an accurate development. And you could, you know, I suppose that there's some ways that you could do this and make it work, too, to make um, some unrolled surfaces. Uh, but anyway, there's more to read on the blog about this stuff and some other uh, posts about how to make these sorts of surfaces that are made out of planar panels and about how to make this particular panel for uh, a different use case.
but there's more on the blog and uh, I hope this is uh, kind of fun and maybe even interesting and uh, not even interesting but useful could be useful anyway good night